Come on, son, 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 son. son. <laughs> What up, y'all? Zed Lover. Welcome to Come On, Son, the podcast. Of course, as always, this podcast is being overseen by the memory and legacy of Combat Jack, the man who put me in the com the uh, podcasting game. It's also brought to you by CigarsInternational.com. Go to CigarsInternational.com for all your cigar needs and locally brought to you by Nissan South Tomorrow, 6889 Jonesboro Road. They got brand new Nissans. They got used. They got certified pre owns They got everything you need. And if you don't want to get a Nissan, they'll get you any car you want. It's 6889 Jonesboro Road. A big shout out to CigarsInternational.com for all they help. And my man Wes out there, everybody that at CigarsInternational.com. When you check out of CigarsInternational.com, looking for a promo code is Ed10. Off. That's E D one zero O F F. Now today on the podcast we have our guest Divas in Defense, Cole Parker, who is the founder along with his brother, and Sky Walker, um, excuse me, Walton, who's a black fifth degree black belt trainer. Um, they have a company called Divas in Defense, and their mission is to empower women of all ages with the training and tools imperative to their personal safety and the safety of their families, okay? We know there's a lot of things that's going on with women nowadays that's been going on that's finally coming to light and and finally coming to the forefront. So they are here to teach you, to empower you, to train you through fun, instinctive learning. All women gain the knowledge to protect and arm themselves while gaining confidence to be fierce and fabulous. So Women's Self-Defense Organization um, started by Cole and his brother Chris, who witnessed domestic violence firsthand as they were growing up. And um, I think it's very important that this is something that we talk about, especially in this day and age of things that are going on and the Me Too movement and everything that's going on with women, the way women are being sold into, into sex slavery and human trafficking and everything that's going on right now. I think it's important to have somebody in to sit down to talk about this subject and Cole is here today and so is Sky from Divas in Defense right here on Come On Son the Podcast. All right, joining me in the studio for this podcast, uh my guests today are Divas in Defense. My man Cole Park is here. Me and Cole smoke together, so we know yeah, we do. And you never told me that you was doing this, but we'll pick that up later. <laughs> and a fifth degree black belt, Miss Sky Walton is a tell me what is Divas in Defense? Sky, I'm gonna start with you. What is Divas in Defense? Divas in Defense is a self defense um, program training women and girls, starting as four, giving empowerment, confidence to women, um, some something that we all need. So we take intuitive um, training, just make it fun and learning for everyone. Okay. All right, Cole, how did you, how, you're the founder of this entire thing. Yeah, man, me and my brother actually started. Nothing divas about us either. No, ain't nothing divas about y'all. <laughs> how did you and your brother come up with this idea and how did it start? Well, we actually grew up in a household where we witnessed domestic violence, man. You really? Know, yeah, so when you had those situations as a guy. From your dad to your mom? It wasn't my dad. I'll just say that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I had a lot of uncles growing up. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we go through that. Yes, sir. But um, either you become a perpetrator of it or you become totally against it. Fortunately, we did the latter. You know, we both married with daughters, so mm-hmm. it was time. Yeah, yeah. And I got, uh, let me see how I got a lot of daughters. Let me tell you. All right. <laughs> Tiffany, Chanel. Don't forget none. You're going to be in no, trouble. <laughs> Summer and Jasmine. I got four gotcha. girls. Four girls and one boy. I got one that turned 18 today. Your daughter? My daughter. Well, happy, happy birthday, birthday to her. Yeah. Yes. I got one that's 18. My youngest daughter's 18 okay okay yeah so i i understand and i worry about them oh boy all the time oh boy i i i always look out for them and how did you get miss sky walton involved in this entire thing uh believe I got it, myself involved yes I let, I let her tell that story yeah tell me the story sky um well pretty much i was at georgia state graduate with another um internship and they were there doing some empowerment for a group girl group that's how i found them he and his brother chris and i was just like listening to his story it was just like oh okay well you need me on your team i'm pretty much what your divas you don't have a diva i'm your diva you know i've been doing it yeah because it's for. pretty hard for guys to walk around talk about divas hey, and they can't, you know, without a diva right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but um just i love their platform i love the program what all the act not pro um 
classes that they had for the women and girls and just they were really hone, honing in on the empowerment side not just the physical oh I can kick you between the legs type no there's other things that goes involved with it that I really appreciate it that men were doing it um, not so much just it was ladies it's different when men do it and like you said you only become either per- perpetrator or you help with it and they've been advocates for it for day one and that was almost tell me about some, oh, some of the other five. stuff Oh, five? Oh, yeah. five years ago. Yeah, now. she almost been with us for five years. It'd be really? Five years this year, man. Yeah, oh, Were I you forgot. already into defense? Yes. And, and... I've been doing taiko- um, martial arts since I was four. I got my first black belt at six. So that's why. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a, wait a minute. <laughs> You are a black belt at six years old? Yes, I was the first um, pretty much African-American black belt to get it in Taekwondo in, um, in Georgia, state of Georgia. So that was really huge. Um, this started when I was four, six, first, first black belt. I'm a fifth degree now, so just training. Need two more so I can be a master, but I'm You get two it. more black belts, and you are what we call a master. Yeah, become a master. I become get the master. master sky. Now it's like then technically it, I'm a master, but... To the federation, I'm trying to be legit. So right, so you more. become master Sky Walton then. Yes. At so you gotta have seven black belts. It's seven degrees till you get your master, and then you continue training. But I am definitely. I just started back. What was it about this guy that made you decide that this is what I like and that's what I want to do? Because I remember taking my son to karate. Right. When he was a kid, and then the next thing is baseball, baseball. then it's skateboard. But I did every sport. I've done every sport except ice sports. But I think my dad wanted a boy. So as soon as I turned like two, he was trying to get me in kickboxing. So I actually started early because they start usually because of your attention span, like six. But when I went for a demonstration, I just fell in love with it. I like the tournaments. I like meeting people and having the opportunity. I was able to go to the Junior Olympics when I was 13. Wow. So um, I was able to see the Taekwondo competition in London when I went um, working for the London 2012 Olympics with Coca-Cola. So it's just, I like how you can take something, a person that doesn't know anything, train them, and you can see them helping and having confidence in themselves. But that's one thing about martial arts and even self-defense. It's all about that confidence building that you don't have to train 24 7 or be like the karate kid even though that was me but i mm-hmm. just enjoyed doing it being the only girl it's like okay yeah i'm the only girl in this class but i can still kick your butt i can still do this how old are you scott i just turned 27 you're 27 years old yes sir are you dating anybody seriously what no okay <laughs> Not in you was like what no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but i am looking though so okay. you know i'm is, here is, local is that <laughs> something that you tell your boyfriends? Um, I can say my friends tell them that because everyone, they look at me, they don't believe it. So if I do say it, they think I'm joking. So it has to be from like my girlfriends or they see my trophies. They'll see me like I did it in pageants. That was my talent. Right. So they start to believe me. And then you get the oh. question. So if I do How this. Do taekwondo in a pageant. You kick it. <laughs> right. You can do a lot. You can do forms. Miss Congeniality. Get weapons, man, you see that? Yeah, you weapons. come out with a key on over, over your karate gear, over your prom dress. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I have my uniform on. I okay. got second place, George State. So, um, nice. But they usually don't believe it, so it goes into, oh, if I push you, can I do this? Then I go into, well, if you push me, you won't be dating me because I don't do the hands <laughs> on me. So, which question do you want? Right. But then I demonstrate, like, I'll do some kicks and everybody. They're just kind of fascinated about it, just being... Um, Intimidated? Intimidating sometimes, but I'm just sweet. Well, so dude want a woman. That, <laughs> but I'm not. Nice. Unless you be like, you know, unless you be like this, all right, you know, that's my girl Sky right there. All right. right. <laughs> Fuck around if you want to. I'm not gonna do nothing. My girl is a fifth degree black. That's girl. it. I mean, my friends say that you know they could do that, but they know I'm not a I'm not an aggressive person. So right. It takes and you're a taught lot. not to be that way, aren't you? You are. You first thing you're taught in Taekwondo or any even in our class, if you can't have the chance, turn around and run away. You're not being a punk or a chump. You are. You don't know what the other person has that you're trying to get back home to your family, to your kids, your boyfriend. And right now I have a four legged pet. Like I have to get back to them. Right. My four legged Babies need me. I hear you. My father used to always say to me, it's always better, better to be a live chicken than a dead hero. Hey, that makes a lot of you're sense. You're a dead hero, they're going to pour a little lick out for that's you. It. That's about it. Wear a everybody. t-shirt. Yeah, you're on a t-shirt <laughs> for about two weeks. Yeah, hashtag. Yeah, hashtag, <laughs> rest in peace, Ed. That was right, my man. Right. Uh, 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 I want to be there. Right, right, right. Let me I want to be pouring out liquor for other people, right. bro. <laughs> I'd rather be called a punk because I ran uh-huh. than stand there and get shot and got to walk around with what, what I call a catastrophe bag on your hip for the rest of your life. Right. Now, I'm not doing it's that. more like de-escalation, Ed. More Absolutely, so I'm, I'm taking, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. taking off, bro. I am taking off, you don't man. 
right. show up to every argument. Tell me some of the programs you have for Divas in Defense. You said it's just not all physical. No, man. But, well, it's not all physical. So we do everything for uh, corporations. So we just did Spelman Faculty yesterday. Okay. Uh, so that's called our Punch and Luncheon. We have a, a girls' night in joint, which is a really good. Oh my gosh! The other thing that really kill you is like a girls' night in. How girlfriends get together? Yeah. It's called kicks and cocktails. Wow. Yeah. So they drink after the class. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have a girls can fight too, which Sky's actually director over. Um, we have just general classes that we have for all ages. And firearm training. Well, we, we actually uh, partner with people for our firearm training. Okay. Um, to be honest with you, it makes liability insurance so high. So, uh, <laughs> so when it comes down to it, it's easier to do it that way. But we do we do firmly believe in women being armed. Yeah. How do hey, hey, Sky? What do, how do you feel about the Me Too movement right now? That's going on. I think it's about time, like bringing it to the forefront. Um, I just from anything you see, we kind of not not say follow the leader, but once we have someone speaking out about it, we feel comfortable and more secure and able to. Speak tell our truth and have someone believe us. So a lot of times when you talk to victims or a survivor, excuse me, they say I was scared to tell because I didn't think someone was going to believe me. And a lot of times it affects their livelihood. Yes. Yeah. It, it's I mean, more than just that one second. It's long well, well, also what they have to go through to prove it, bruh. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's, disgusting. it's like it's a redo. You see what I'm saying? Right. They're poked, they're prodded. They're, you know, what were you are you wearing? sure? Yeah, are you sure? Right. Did, right. They did you discovered. say no or did you just let it happen? You know, right. It doesn't matter. That's why we make sure we teach all our ladies and girls a firm no is everything. A firm no. I don't care if it's a no, you push them off, you jump, whatever you got to do, make that no firm. Because mm. anything after that, that guy no is knowingly and willingly raping you. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You see what I mean? Yes doesn't give you a no. Right. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I heard that before. Absolutely. That firm no is it's, everything. Bro, it's everything. It's absolutely something that I that I tell my daughters all yeah, the time. You got to be a cold dude to to go in after she said after no. After a firm ass, then you, you got to be a you cold just, dude. You're, just a dirty you're a rapist. rapist. Yeah, you're just a foul rapist. <laughs> That's it. You just foul. Unfortunately, guys don't really know that either. Like, even if you are not verbally saying no, they might think, oh, you're just playing hard to get. You're right. she just wants me to work for it. So I. That's one thing about Divas and Offense, too, when we're talking to the girls, we're letting them know, because we know they have boyfriends, girlfriends, significant others, that if you are still, like I said, not saying no, but you are pushing away verbal cues, like stroking your shoulder because you went over to Netflix and chill, right. now is more than what you expected. You have, your, it's your body. You right. can say, go away. You can push away. You can turn your shoulder. You're, you, he didn't hear a yes, so he shouldn't be entering. Yeah, I, 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 I teach my sons to wait for a yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, you wait yeah, for it. Yes. I got a son, my only son, Zaire. Okay. And he's 21 years old and he's in college. Okay. And there's certain things that he just did not know. Right. And things that I have to teach him about dealing with women, about body language. Absolutely. With women, That's about good. being about being respectful, about understanding what that no actually means and waiting for that actual yes. And I think one of the biggest things that I had to teach him as a young man is when the fellas go... We got so and so. She's fucked up. Let's all get oh, some. Boy. No brother. Yeah, you need to go ahead and tell them no. Yeah, I'm a Q too, so I'm a, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a fraternity. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a lot of times I told bros like, bros, she's drunk. She gonna be in this room. Somebody gonna be on watch duty. Right. And nobody's gonna go in that room. That's right. Know? And that's happened. Yeah, yeah. And you gotta be very careful. And and as for women, it's just so tough. Yeah. In general, absolutely. For them, and I don't think as men we realize. How hard it is for women. Boy. I know I don't like to be groped. No. I don't like it. And no. it happens to me. Right. And I don't like it. It really happens to me. Oh, look at Edlo. And they yeah. grab my ass. And I'll be like, sweetheart, don't do that. <laughs> right. You know, I got to turn around and get serious. Don't, Absolutely. Don't do that because you wouldn't like it if I did it to you. They so would please. not at all. I don't like the feeling. So I could just imagine being an attractive woman. Right. What you have to go through with just. Day to day, yeah. Cat calling, yeah. yeah. At yes. Eleven, all that sexual oh, yeah, harassment. Yeah. Man. Eleven year olds. Oh, we're are all target. guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Call you guilty of cat hey, calling. Hey man, see how you try to do that to me? Yeah, you guilty. <laughs> Maybe when I was. Young. Every man has done some <laughs> cat calling. I mean, as you grow older and you get more yeah. mature, you realize that women actually don't like it. Right. But when you're young, 
Well, I mean, if you're on the corner drinking forties with the fellas, and something <laughs> nice come by, you say some dumb shit. I plead the fifth to all. Oh, we say some. <laughs> but you know, like even sexual harassment is so simple as, "Hey, look, those are some really nice pants." Compared to, "You look good in those pants." Right. You see what I mean? So it's like it really depends. Compared also, to, as long as I got a face, you got places. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty. Yeah, that's, that don't go that's work. direct harassment. <laughs> <laughs> that that don't I'm work single. well in the workplace. Yeah. You that's know what I'm I mean? Single. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it's, it's just it's it's too much. Yeah. And I think society, and if, if y'all agree or disagree, you free to chime in. I think society has set it up where we've made women feel like that. Well, I mean, our culture, especially the, our culture, kids, yes, especially like when it comes to hip hop. Yeah, if you, we teach misogyny every day. You know. Oh my god, and it's you know? so <laughs> rampant, and yeah. it's so bad. And I tell people that there's a difference between making a song where you're specifically talking about one woman, right? Right. And this woman has hurt you, and you're calling her a bitch. Right. Right? You're telling a story about this one particular woman, and she's a bitch, than these bitches. Right, right. Every, every song everyone. now is these bitches. Absolutely. These bitches, fuck, fuck these bitches, these bitches on my dick, and I had this bitch over here. Why is everybody a bitch? Well, believe it or not, it's getting worse, because now the emasculation of men is going on. Right. So now you got a situation where these dudes been chiming in so bad on the women that I hate to admit it, they're evolving into women, man. This couple of young <laughs> outfits be looking like dresses and jeggings. I'm like, dude, how you? Jeans. How you? Uh, uh, you wear a five T in jeans and you a 38 waist. How you do that to yourself? You right. know what I mean? Yeah. They be killing me with that, man. Yeah, yeah you're, you're absolutely right, though. Yeah. But I think culturally, America has right. set it up to where our women look like our women are treated as objects because of the way America objectifies our women. Absolutely. But Even I, coming from way to way back from Hugh Hefner Absolutely. and Playboy Before Magazine. That. And you can't have a pageant. Remember, you couldn't have a pageant without a, the bathing right. suit Option. competition and who is the swimsuit model for Sports yep. Illustrated. What does Sports Illustrated got a, swim, a swimsuit edition for? Right. Or the Victoria's Secret's lingerie Show. Or why the beer got to have a chick that's half naked. <laughs> a beer commercial. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we objectify yeah. women as sexual objects all the time. And then that gets into the psyche of a young man growing up. And to him, that's what a woman is. Absolutely. Yep. A sexual object. Something for me, you know, to do what I want to do with. You know, how many fantasy. Time, yeah, how many times you heard that? Cole? Yeah, man, fuck that. I'll fuck that bitch. Right, right, right. They ain't right. nothing. Right. You know, Absolutely. we objectify them as a piece of meat. And, and and but we don't want to do that with our sisters, oh, and our daughters, and our, oh, daughters and our mama. Oh no, story. yeah, it's all different. Then. Right? Anybody else's sister? That's somebody's right. sister. Right? That's somebody's mom and daughter. Every and time. somebody's daughter. Every time. Every single time. Yeah. But 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 we don't want to do that. We don't think about that when it comes to our people. But we think about that. We're so easy to dismiss somebody else. Absolutely. But. Miss Sky, yes, sir. You women play a big part of in changing the culture of how you look at, right? Because Instagram I so. is tough. I mean, Instagram, Instagram is tough. Instagram is tough. It's tough. And it's just like, um, I mean, I started Clark Atlanta at sixteen. So when just going around walking on campus, you went to Clark Atlanta at sixteen. I yeah. did. What was I doing at 16? I wasn't in college at The 16. complete opposite. Stupid as hell. It was 07. Yeah, it made me feel dumb sitting here. I'm on that clock in line at 16. It was just a natural next step after I graduated. It was okay. okay. When but you graduate from high school at what age? 15. 15, 16, yeah. What, what age you graduate from high school, Cole? 17. 17? Yeah, I, was, yeah, I think uh, you were 18. 16. I graduated early. I had to wait yeah, to walk. Yeah, so 16. So you yeah. had to wait to walk? Why? Because I wanted to walk in May. They told me I can graduate in December. Who told you to be graduate? You want see? I don't know. See, Scott's one they, of them, right? They were already making me graduate a year early. I Make wanted to at least walk. I didn't want to just. I think starting sixteen, college was nice. You know, it was good. I, I did you go away to college? No, no, I went to Clark Atlanta. Yeah, she up the street. Oh, you I'm from here? I stayed on campus. That's one thing I but, definitely. Oh, what well, did you did go away to college? Yeah, I did. You know, I stayed on campus, sweet life. So if I was there for two years, then I transferred to Georgia State just because of better opportunities, and I was able to do a lot more with my Hope Scholarship that way. Right. Um, but I, it is a, just in our psyche. We learn from young. Like I was saying, the cat calling we hear at 11. We're looking at magazines that we need to wear the Victoria's Secret push-ups. We right. need to wear this off our shoulder, wear the makeup. Like, I'm looking at, like, these shows on, like, the rap game and stuff. There's 13-year-olds that look... Better than thirty. Well, their makeup looks better than some thirty-year-olds. Well, they like, learn it off YouTube. Yeah, like I go to YouTube. Yeah. I 
like YouTube versity, but I'm 27. I don't want my 13 year old doing that. That's why I love Divas in Offense because not only are you trying to change the men perspective, you have to change women that oh, you're not looking. You you don't need to be looked at as just because you have hips. Um, you know, you're doing this. Like I was told since I was 12, you have hips. You have the brains, body, and beauty. You got thing. it from your mama. Yeah, I heard that growing <laughs> up, and so that can be seen as why can I not just be seen as pretty beauty? Why do you have to put my body into? But it? here's a question, and let me play devil's advocate Go for on. a minute, Uh-oh. okay? Uh-oh. Sky, you're a woman. Good at it. What, how do you dress in a certain manner and then expect us not to say anything? Now, my daddy used to always say, if you don't want to be known as something, don't, don't dress uniform. like it. Don't, <laughs> exactly. If you're not a whore, don't put on a whore uniform. But what, I mean, just because it's a short dress or a shirt skirt, why is that? Oh, well, your boobs is out? But who, you do, who you doing it for? You're doing it for the attention of what? Not necessarily. You can be doing it for the intention of, I have small boobs, and I wouldn't have just got a boob job, and I want to show them all because I'm empowered about then my Then we're going to say something about it. If I walk around my cock out, somebody's going to hey, say something about it. I can't, I cannot like put that. my cock on Instagram <laughs> that is or vulgar, hanging though. out of it. It's very vulgar, but I'm keeping it real. It's my podcast, Whoa. and we talk I, real here. You'll lose a lot of followers. Right. right. I can't have my joint out. All right. So I was born with a – say, for, 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 for the sake of argument, I was born with a small cock, okay? okay? Penis, whatever you want to call it, yeah, right? So I go to the doctor, uh-huh. and I get a penis enlargement. I get a penile enlargement. Now I'm about 11 and a half, 12 inches <laughs> strong penis here. If I walk around – with, with my joint exposed, I have to expect what's going to come along with that. Okay, now you have wait. to expect it, but then also just as women, like if I'm wearing a tight dress, I'm wearing a tight dress to show it off like... Then I you can't want me to okay. comment so on it. Let, 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 let me chime in. Let me chime in. That's what you're wearing it so, so, for. So, Ed, Ed, so look, you got to look at it from this perspective, okay? It's a lot. Every, <laughs> every generation has its own set of fashion trends. Absolutely. Okay. So regardless, we went through the, the baggy trend. We, right when before left us, eye disco, and, and and disco all was disco was tight. The dudes wore that one. Yeah, the dudes. You see was what tight. I'm saying? Yeah. So it depends the left on left eye. Them look like little dudes <laughs> right. running around. Right. I but you know, they like crisscross reincarnated. Like but <laughs> they still look like girls. But when Makeup it com- wise, but when it comes clothes, down to it, the same shit we The clothing goes with the fashion trends. So it, it becomes with us. How do we change the male's mentality? That there are some things that are just trendy and not showcasing. Right. You know what I mean? Because like skinny jeans. Because be with because you. Instagram <laughs> okay. became the showcase. Well, I mean, to be honest, you have women. some women who are really trying to showcase. They're doing yeah. it for the attention. That's doing why they're doing it for the gram. They're doing it for the gram. Doing it for the gram. Doing it for But those who just wear, likes, those it. who have some of the same outfits don't mean that that's what they're doing. But they're uh, they're, they're they're categorized with the other women because it's easy. Mm. It's easy for us to say, oh, short skirt, yeah, she thought like the rest of them. It's easy. That's the easy route. For those of y'all who don't know, <laughs> but, it's also how you, <laughs> but it's also how you carry yourself in an outfit. Like, if I have a little black dress on and I put it on with some J's, I'm still comfortable. I can go to right down the street or whatever, but it changes if I put it on is heels. The, it is the way you carry it's yourself. It's how you carry yourself. It you can still, you can be a thought inside. I'm just you know, speaking, I'm being the devil because that devil's advocate Which is fine. because it's I'm good. at a point right it's now good. where I absolutely understand with having four girls. Right. Mm-hmm. I absolutely understand what's right and what's not right. You know, I don't say anything. Because they probably wore some stuff. I don't want to be part of the me too. They wore some stuff that was pissing shit. you off. But you know, like, what you wearing? A lot of people don't have that. I just look at it and be like, well, you're going to get it tonight. That's the way I look at it. When I see the girls coming out, I'll be like, woo. Not your Sister, daughter. <laughs> I, tell, I, I try to tell my daughters, but you right. know, every woman wants to look sexy. Right, right, right. So I tell my daughters, listen, you better, you wearing that, you better have the mace on you, because right, you're right. going to get it tonight, because you, you look incredible, right. and these men are going to be on you, so it's been you're a few inviting times my it. daddy told me to go back in the house because oh, my, you know, my dress is way that's too short. Yeah. Yes, you know, sir. It's been a few times for that, but Because it falls on 22. us. Who you going to call? Us. You going to call time. us. Every now time. we got to come fight eight <laughs> niggas. But we don't understand. But like you said, it's a trend. Like, oh, dang. Like, unfortunately, 
I was one of those that had the skirt, short skirt, short this and stuff, and people try to grope on me, but I knew I the could Daisy handle Duke it. The Daisy Duke trend. Yes. Oh, of course right. you can handle that it. Was it breaks somebody on. Yeah. But people don't know that <laughs> I still like to go Shaolin. out. I don't like to be on guard 24-7. Like, if I want to go out, I want to be going, you know, dancing. You're like in the 35th chamber of Shaolin right now. Like Wu Tang. It's just like, it's just your perspective and your how you carry yourself and what you think about yourself and your body. Like, you can have Sky, you're putting your finger behind somebody's ear and they're, and they're passing out right there. You got the pressure points. <laughs> it ain't today. I can't do all that. <laughs> you flying yeah. around like no. Jet Li in the 36 Once chambers. Once you get your black belt, you become yeah. legal. So right. I don't do jail you can't, very right. well. You can't when you become a black belt. Oh, no, you got to register. You become legal. Your yeah. hands are kind of a weapon. So, you, like, you if I get in a fight, and I initiated it, I can be the ones held liable for these medical bills. Absolutely. And an ambulance ride is $300. I don't have that. What if you're protecting yourself? Protecting myself is self-defense. But I'm not going to be overly aggressive. Like, once I have that, if it's a good five feet, two inches, whatever, and I know I can get away, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to stand there and be like, oh, so now you think you better. So what if she's she calling you out? She's still calling you out. You walking away. Time to go. You better run, bitch. That's no, fine. No, 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 no. You, that's fine. That's you got good. really good self-control. That's you're fine. Like, Ugh. But I've seen you know what in your heart, Scott, you can punch her face straight through. It is, it. but and I know in my heart I see people laid up. I know people can be lined up. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you want to stomp somebody, but you can't. Okay. You know, it's bad. Sometimes you just want to real quick, that hard part again hand right here. You just, just want to get it right to the throat. Right no, no, it's yeah, better to right out. turn around, and run, run away. away. I can't do that, but I've seen yeah. the opposite side. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying this. She, she said she does it. I'm yeah, asking right, her, right. do she want to do it? Sometimes, sometimes you know, yeah. it gets you up here, but I also don't know. Somebody could take this water bottle and cigar and try to stab me with it. Ain't nobody got time for that. Right. I look, my face... You know, I'm, you do got I'm one of them innocent faces. Yeah, though. so yeah, you do. I you can't got do one of them. You kick ass. It's but I also have a lot <laughs> of brothers. Scary. I have a lot of play brothers. So a lot of people, when they talk about dating me, I'll be like, "So this is my brother. How you doing?" <laughs> right. They they meet you before you meet my daddy. And half the people think my daddy in the CIA, so. That's they cool. should. I think he is. You do? Why, why do you think? <laughs> they think my daddy works for the CIA. Oh, why do you think Sky Walter's father's in the hey, CIA? Man, None of my friends seen him. Right, I'm one of the few people I think in her life that has ever met him. He's a, he, you can tell he used to be a bodybuilder, man. He's just a big dude. Okay. And he got this really, really, with oh, he got a girl. really, really humble presence, though, which is really great. And offsetting. Yes. To say the least. Yeah, Even he, with a super big yeah. dude <laughs> with a very humble, <laughs> yes. offsetting presence is scary. Every single time. Mm. Every my, single time. You know, I always nice. like to quote yeah. my parents, an empty wagon makes the most noise. <laughs> right. He so probably got. Like, <laughs> tell, oh, yo, i tear this whole shit up. Right, usually they're not doing anything. No, Definitely not. No. It's usually the very quiet guys. That is, yeah. I call it Chihuahua. Yeah. The chihuahuas, we let you know, we let yeah. them talk. Till the they big get dogs out. are very yeah. quiet. And they're, they're, you know, you you rarely see a lion, right? Raw, right? Absolutely, it's very red. Usually, a lion is just waiting around and yawning. <laughs> Time to eat, right? <laughs> right? So that's probably who your dad is. It is right. very quiet man. Now to tear some shit up. I'm okay know? with it, but I, I but know. having the training too, it has me in that mindset of I don't need to keep going back and forth with you because like you're just yelling, you're yelling like, oh yeah, you better walk away. That's fine. I'm going home, right? Because I've had friends that laid up in the hospital because they got in a fight. I've had girlfriend, guy friends that I don't want that to happen to me. I, I have been to jail happen. and it cost me eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, and I don't <laughs> for a fight. For a fight, that's oh, a yeah. I don't yeah. fight for anymore. A fight. Right. And what happened? I took a bowling. Right. <laughs> I did. I started that's bowling good. seriously you and good? myself you good? because I was so frustrated uh -huh. about what happened to me defending the woman who is now my wife. Absolutely. That it cost me jail and money. it cost me. 80 grand. Yeah. I try to and it cost girlfriend. me community service. Oh, yeah. All because I was protecting my fiance from getting hit in the head with a liquor bottle in the club. Well, so I was like, you know what I'm getting ready to do? I'm going bowling. Go for it. Because when nice I'm spin. in the bowling alley, all right, all right, hell of a game now. But when I'm in the bowling alley, it would just it keep me away from those crowds of people because people will prey on you. Right. Because of who you are. Well, you know, because that's, they know they could get paid. But that's why we teach situational mm -hmm. awareness. You know, like, so when you're in a situation, you're aware how fast that is escalating. Right. I don't care how many times you think not. If it's a drunk person, you know from there first what you say, you know what? I actually didn't say anything. You know? Right. You know from there. So we do teach a lot of situational awareness and just being attentive, man. I, I think that's the scariest thing. You know, you got these people who be on cell phones and stuff in the clubs and out in the streets and walking down the street. Mm -hmm. You're not paying attention. You're not. And outside of saying, look, I got this $1,000 item, why don't you come take it? That's really what you're doing. Oh, yeah, you got to be know, on point. You got to be on point so you Stay keep your on phone your in your square, pocket. Stay on your square, ladies. Stay on your square. Please it. be on point. 
What is some of the best advice you think you can give to young women out there about being on point? Um, as far as being, like I said, number one is just knowing what's going on and trusting Be your aware gut. Be of your surroundings. Oh, bro, trusting your gut. If you get them little butterflies, even of us, even as men, you know, if something doesn't feel right, do not ignore oh, that. I know when it's going down. Don't ignore Trust it. Yourself. I can smell it. Yeah, man. Let me, I that's know. Me. I don't know. Maybe I'm from the hood. That's inner city living. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll be like, yeah. it's about to pop off yeah, in here. Any Let's second. Go. Yeah. Any second. But you know, but that's I had to learn that skill. Right. That's, that's not a skill I had. I had to learn the. I'm not scary of everything, but I had to learn. You that can't see it. Like, I can see it. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, shit. Oh, I can see it way before You can happened. see it. I'm like, hey, they moving around situation. too much over there. Check, he please. He's angry. <laughs> he's, he's pacing. That's when it. you see somebody pacing. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to me shots. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I got to go. Yeah. Time to go. Yeah, but you. But so that, you know, just trusting their instincts, uh, always knowing what's going around, and, and be prepared to act. You know, you either you're going to yeah. have to fight or you're going to have to flee. Right. Flee is your number one option. But and don't be scared to, to take your shoes off, take them heels off, yeah. and get your feet dirty. Exactly. I mean, that's something like a robbery. If somebody got a gun asking for your purse, Give toss it. To it. Them. Toss it. Go with the other way. Toss it. Yeah. Yeah. Toss it and run. Yeah. That's all they want. That's why they ask you for it. That's right. Absolutely. You know? And February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness oh. Month. Man, yes. let me tell you. Tell me how... Well, one in four girls in a relationship are in a violence, vi- uh, date, domestic violence or dating violence relationship. It's not only physical, man, just something. You can't be that person's friend. Control. You know what? You don't even look cute today. You, it's just very, very violent as far as verbal, psychological, and physical. So one in four girls. One in four. And that's wow. reported numbers. Four daughters. Yeah, I got four daughters. So it just shows you how. Yeah, odds are one of them has been the situation. I'm gonna have to investigate that. Yeah, but I mean, you know, sometimes they don't know what it is. They just thought, well, he just loved me. He don't like me being around nobody else. Oh no. Or he cares about me, or he's just checking up on me. And that's one thing I learned for the last being with Divas and Fence and just experiencing this um, this month a lot with girls is that they don't realize that they're in some type of abusive um, relationship. It could be, oh, he's texting me five times before the first half of the quarter is over in his game. Like, why are you texting me that much? Or they're just trying to say, hey, why are you? What are you doing? Oh, he's just trying to keep tabs on me. Oh, he's cute. He likes a little Snapchat. He likes to see my Bitmoji and see where I'm at on the map. No, there is other things behind it. Like, um, we went to high school and I was just talking to it and a girl came to me and asked me a question. Like, hey, my my, my boyfriend doesn't like when I wear certain types of outfits, but I'm an athlete. You know, he always it starts an argument and stuff and just talking to her more. And she realized that he has some other things going in behind his um, reasoning for saying why you can't wear this and do that is because he was trying to control her. Yeah. They're the ones with money. We're 17. Like your daughter just turned 18. You know, money is this. Oh, he has a little money. I get to do this. It happened to me at Clark Lane. I was 16. Oh, you got a car. I can roll with you. But then they start to use that against you. Like, okay, I'm not going to pay for this. I'm not going to pay for your phone. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. All of unless these you things, do what I want. Unless you do. Unless you show up where you I want you to box. share. You, you wear what I want to wear. <laughs> right. You stay in you your box. This. Right. So that's one thing about this month is very important. We help those realize that they are in a situation or how to prevent from being in that situation. Yeah. Mm. Like we got a class called On Her Own, which is focused only on college age. So like junior and high school through college, pretty much. Okay. I would say we usually cap it off around six to 10 girls. Mm -hmm. Every class we do, we find out it's a girl there who has been molested, is currently being molested, has been raped, is currently in an abusive relationship. Every class. Wow. Every. That's how powerful I want you to understand this. That's sad. Every class. That every. is very sad. There's be times we just sit there and talking to a group of high school girls. And you like now we have to point out we can look at them and tell. It's a, it's a certain look they give of just embarrassment. You know, it's really a very embarrassing, you know. Yeah. And um, they start to cry. You know, we try to change the subject around, but stay on it because you got to. Mm-hmm. The reality is it's real. Yeah. It's real. Wow. That that that's very sad. Yeah, man, it's the that truth. That many young ladies out here are living. living Brother, with one that out truth. of four. And you asked me about the Me Too. They actually have um the Me Too K twelve. Right. Dealing with the sexual assault and abuse in schools. So that's very prevalent. Like I said, wow. eleven. I my girls at um the school I teach are K through fifth. So that is like five through 12 or whatever. And just talking to them, even my um, third and fourth and fifth graders, you hear them how they're being bullied by the boys. They're being bullied by the girls, the teachers, the sexual assault. Their coach has touched them. Someone has done something to make them feel less than a person. So the Me Too hashtag has actually transcended from adults to taking care of the girls that 
they have no voice. Like yeah. it's taking women who are powerful in the media all the time to finally years they're in their thirties, forties to speak out about something I, that happened to them when, when they were nineteen. I mean, think 19. about the gymnast coach, a hundred fifty girls. Now I'm just girls? about to bring him up, Larry Nassar, yes. who just got yes. forty to one hundred and seventy-five years. It's, it's not enough. Over fifty girls. Uh, it was hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty yes. girls. And these are girls we idolize. We're idolizing people that are hurt and, you know, that right, are damaged. That are hiding it. Hiding it yeah. because they want, like, that's the form of abuse as well. He was holding over, do you want to go to the Olympics? You have to train with me. He's holding something they've worked their entire life for to a two-minute massage session just for him to feel better about himself. He's taken all their um, hard work, everything they've done, and, and trapping so these innocent. Penetrating these young ladies. Oh, and trapping them. With his hands. Dude, with no crazy. gloves on or nothing. Dude. And sometimes the parents they didn't even right in come front of in them. there for that. Dude, do you know Atlanta is number one for human trafficking? Mm -hmm. Really? Atlanta. Number one hub. Hartsville Jackson. And these dudes order girls, fly in, demean and, 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 and have sexual intercourse with these young girls and go home and sit at dinner with their families, man. And it's, it's not crazy. just international. We're talking people. middle school girls. It was a school in the Pittsburgh community here in Atlanta, Georgia, that was the number one in the state for child prostitution, and it was a middle school. And they're not always kidnapping a, them; they're above, taking them home. Who's above this? Who's? I mean, it's money, man. It's like anything else. It's black market. Who's soliciting these young girls to do this? The same people that solicit drugs. Everyday Joe. People. Business people. People. Like, I'm a huge advocate for commercial um, sex tra sexual exploitation in juveniles. That is one right. of my um, certificates. I'm certified in that. And so you have, like you said, who is ordering the 401 people, bank tellers, but who just is dads, providing everybody. these children? There's different Man. services. There's apps. Okay. There's, there's apps. There's calling. There's, right. hey, do you know this person? Oh, I can put you in contact. Well, and they live in white picket fence houses. They live here in affluent houses. Right. And but we they saw the orders. catch a predator. Right. But, I mean, there's much more to it than that. So, like, the whole triangle, heroin triangle yeah. thing. Well, that's the way in. So, believe it or not, over almost 70% of these girls live in halfway houses. Oh, my. Wow. They're prostituting these kids, man. It's crazy what they're doing. And I know sometimes we're oblivious because we're here. Right. But it is here. In Atlanta, Georgia, and they wow. look like everyday girls going to the YMCA. Yeah, there's a you have the it's it's a transactional biz. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? What do you mean? It's it's a it's transactional, transactional business yeah. deal. That's all it is. Is that you have the consumer, you have the person who is setting it up, and then you have the girl who's not getting anything, right. who probably was in a situation trying to get help out of another situation, and now she's and a lot of these young it. ladies are foster kids. Foster, foster kids. kids, show them love, show them attention, tell them they're pretty. Oh, and I they can put them on this. drugs and. It's Next crazy, thing you man. know, it's gone. And it's not just everybody's smoking weed. Let yeah. me take some weed. But then going to get them is hard because, like, you trying to save them. So you've been in a position where you go try to rescue these girls. Where are you going to take them back to? The halfway house? Right. They they you know, to the from. foster care system, you're going to take them back there? You know what's going to happen? The dude's going to show up the next day be like, Say, what happened? You, I love sorry. you. Come with me. When they, they get private, hit them upside the head and give them heroin. They wow. brainwash them thinking crazy. that they can't survive without them. That th right. They tear them down. That's a pimp game. It yeah, is. It, uh, yeah, pimp game. That's what human trafficking is yeah. all day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, that's, and it's going on now with them younger and younger now. Huh? Man, let me tell you. Dudes ordered 11, 9, 11 year olds, nine year olds. It's crazy, bro. I'm at one of the most disgusting things I've ever heard. Oh, and this life. is accurate it happens here. To, to and, boys and, and I was girls. In, and I, right. I was to boys in, and girls. I was in Mexico, uh -huh. and I was disgusted by it. I was in Mexico, and we were walking down the street. Uh, we were in Puerto Vallarta, okay. and we had rented okay. a house. There's a bunch of us, a bunch of couples, and we're walking down the street, and this guy just steps out of nowhere, out of nowhere. We didn't even see him. And he just steps out in front of us, like six of us, and he goes, pussy? And I go, what? He goes, yeah, young, 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 14, 13. Oh, yeah. And we was like, motherfucker, get the fuck oh, out yeah, of here. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. I was in Thailand for my 26th birthday, and I've had people. She's in Thailand. Now she's 16, <laughs> and she goes to college. <laughs> now she's in Thailand. I ain't never been to Thailand. All right, go ahead, tell us. It. But it's not even that. They will come out behind, like when you're going to go to your souvenirs, because they know you are a tourist, they will come out and not even just show you pictures. and. 
they speak no English, but they will say, you know, sex, girls. And they'll say the ages, 9, 10, 11. Oh. And this was in Thailand. Or they're not even afraid to come out and ask me. Like, I've had, when we were there, we were there for a week. I had at least two people say, oh, you I need a new friend? For half an hour. Mm-hmm. Chill. Need a friend? <laughs> <laughs> so people ask you, you need a new friend? You need a new friend? Right. You know, want to be friends? Yeah, Look but for it's business? Crazy. No, I'm But it's, it's not even just like the foreigners. Like, in your that's the bad part. That we're yeah, programmed. Think, because we are right, we're programmed. programmed to think that's the kind yeah, of that's shit. They, that's that's over in Thailand. Thing. That's yeah, in, yeah, all that's in DR no, and all that other It is here. And sometimes it's other women. Other women doing this to girls, man. Other women. Of the setting women. up these young girls, bro. They had one. They had a couple arrested. The woman was in charge, and I think they rescued seventy-two girls. It's easier for women to get the trust of a person. So you right. get the runaways. It's easier for a woman to come and say, "Hey, you know, are you okay? Are you hungry? What are you doing out here?" They just go and talk to them. They might not do anything the first day. They're grooming them. So that's the process. The women groom, and unfortunately, the women that are grooming are the women that were taken yeah. when they were younger, and yeah. this all they know. And then some of them, uh, they are the ones in charge, too. Yeah. Yes. They had money out here in these streets. That's exactly they the what boss. it is. They, the, they pimping. Yes. They are. Scary, man. It's very scary. Yeah. And it's scary because they, it's scary that you can do something to someone else knowing that that's what happened to you. You already know the yeah. outcome. You know what it what they're going to do to the girls. And they're not just guys calling for girls Mm-mm. or guys calling for guys. They're both sexes right. calling for everyone, and you know they're going to be abusive. They're going to smack yeah, like, them. Men come get little this. boys just the same. Oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's why every time a child is missing, uh, I get nervous. Every time I hear a child is missing, I'm like, dang. Right. I already know. Simple. In Atlanta, I already automatically assume that's what it is. Especially right. if the body's never found, stuff like that, I'll be like, they didn't got us. Some, they didn't got another one on. Them. Yeah, well, it's just terrible. It just wasn't Wayne Williams back in the days, huh? But it's it's here, it's prevalent, and it's going on. That's it. It's it's Every day. that's that's very very saddening, yeah. disheartening. It's crazy on so many levels that you would think that a person can do something like that and then go to home with their family and chill. Yeah, they do it to kids. They have the same age. Yeah. Well, of course, because it's not their child. Right. Exactly. That's the way everybody looks at it. Well, well it, sometimes they do it to their own. Yeah. You know. yeah, but like you said earlier, yeah. the reason why you got into this is because you grew up watching abuse in your Absolutely. house. Absolutely. And you decided, Cole, that you weren't going to get involved with that, that you're going to be an advocate an advocate for it. Right. And that goes mm-hmm. back to what you were saying, Sky, that a lot of people that has happened to are the ones that turn around and perpetrate the crimes against Absolutely. the next person. That's all so they know. So the cycle continues. That's all they know, man. But you're trying to break the cycle. That's it. With and I educate men, defense. too, you know what I'm saying? So oh, even though we're educated, deep in defense, absolutely. but we need our education. Sometimes Animals. we just don't know. It just makes me hate being a man sometimes <laughs> with all this stuff. Oh, it is on. tough sometimes. It is, right? Is it because you're looking yeah. at dudes that's around you and you're like, how could, how could you do this? Yeah. Like, how do you treat another human being like that? How do you how do you treat a woman like that? Hey, man. That's all they know. Sometimes they genuinely don't know any better. They're... Sometimes they're just dumb as hell, too. Right. That, too. Well, you know, not, ignorance is still ignorance. Oh, absolutely. You know, so, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's just, it, I was standing around two people yesterday talking from Atlanta. I didn't know what the fuck they was talking oh, about. Yeah, that, I tell people I'm bilingual since I moved here. <laughs> <laughs> I speak zone four, too. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to <laughs> I speak zone four. It's crazy, because they were talking for a while. Oh, yeah. And I heard, uh, I picked up a few things. But <laughs> well, can you other, start back at the beginning, man? Other than that, I shit, because yeah. I will, uh, gee, I tell motherfucking this right here, I ain't move here. Oh, that was, you try to get him. I, I caught the 25 years part. Right. You try to get him 25, 25, shit. And I, would, and I was just like, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> right. I just be like, what did you I got to learn how to speak zone for. You better learn to speak it. Speak It'll zone get you out of situation, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get you out. You'd be like, wait a minute. How can people for? find Divas in Defense and how can they attend classes and how do we help spread the word to make this thing bigger than what it already is? Um, well, everything is Divas in Defense, D I V A S I N D E F E N S E, on all social media platforms with Divas in Defense.com. But we have trainers in different regions across the nation, also in Bermuda, um, and we're willing to travel to train. Like Sky and uh, S- Sky and my wife Vanessa, they just came back from a three-week stunt that they did over at Kuwait, and they train like Tell the police me force about and everything. That yeah. Sky, tell me about being in Kuwait. Because uh, you already was all up in Thailand. <laughs> and all that too. Since you're going so everywhere, I can stop since you're going to Kuwait already. <laughs> you know, so She's been to every continent. She can flex on every continent at least twice. She's about to flex on you. 
So you don't have to keep getting shocked. That's okay, all I'm so saying. you've been to every com- continent at least twice. Yes. Okay, so tell me about Kuwait. Kuwait was amazing. We trained um, over 600 ladies from ages 12 and up. We went to about four different actual bilingual schools and um, Kuwait University, the American University of Kuwait, excuse me, uh, 32 different countries, over 64 classes. And at one point we were doing, I was teaching about three or four classes a day, sure but when over 30 girls in each class. And you've come to find out that they are exactly the same. Like um, my sister's Lebanese, so I was kind of okay with, listening to the Arabic and having looking at women with the hijab but because our class um, with Vanessa and I and everyone else around were only ladies we were able to see them come out of their hijabs see that they are vibrant oh they um, can come women. out of their hijabs around no, no, men. no men around no men around yeah. unless it's their husband or um son or family Father. member but you have to be blood and but we were there that's why it was um easy for um us and vanessa to go and be able to empower these women because we were just like them i could say my first class just because it was long i was super nervous because i didn't know how the translation or just the language barrier was going to be but there wasn't any barrier they had the same exact stories that some flee fled from egypt with their husbands with their kids to kuwait because kuwait accepted them because they had the the means to give them a class like this and we had fathers signing their daughters up we had husbands signing their wives up like hey i need you to come take this class oh you're coming to the school even if it's for 45 minutes the girls were so welcoming and thankful that we came that we cared enough to come and help them because some of them it's their fathers attacking them it's their brothers attacking them and not just sexually like the physical abuse of having to conform with different religious um things and just your family ties is hard so being able to help a girl even if i saw them for 45 minutes it made such a powerful impact on me we were able to get on the radio and reach tons of more viewers and listeners that way as well just let them know that it's okay to fight back that it is okay to to defend is yourself it in kuwait it oh, is. yeah. So, so Kuwait is a little bit more, more West, has a little bit more Western civilization. Okay, that's what I'm saying. It's not like Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. And so it's like, not like Dubai. So there right. is a difference where Dubai is more touristy. Kuwait is definitely a family place. Mm-hmm. Of course, not everywhere is going to have just the freedom. Like our second day there, we had a story of a 13-year-old girl who was raped right. by a taxi driver literally down the street from where we stayed. Absolutely. And we stayed in a great area. Mm-hmm. Um, we were able to walk to the store by ourselves or solo. So it wasn't a problem just like, oh, somebody's going to jump out. I think the biggest thing that we had to worry about on that trip was cats <laughs> because his wife hates cats. That right. was our biggest thing. But um, but like even a lot a of bit- cats in Kuwait. What? Yeah, just those, walk down those cats are it ain't China. They're like this big too. <laughs> yeah. These cats are tall. They like baby panthers. Oh wow. <laughs> but like so like to give you a little like bit more give cat. you a little more understanding of their culture, of right? Later, right? So like where the women do have a little bit of leeway is it's the husband or the father's decision to force the woman to wear the hijab. Okay? Number okay. one. But number two, what's really crazy is if you're married to a woman, okay, this is a law they're pushing to change right now. And you go home and you catch her cheating, you could kill her and you won't face jail time. Yeah, it's called the Abolish Act of. Um, right, yeah, one, I forgot the name of it. something like that. But, but that, that's what they're trying is. to get that because they're coming to find out that dudes just come home killing their old ladies and like, she was cheating. And they oh, got away wow. with it. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're really pushing the, on that. So but that's through Unite, which is United, United Nations. Way, United yeah. Nations. And yeah. um, Balsam, who brought us over, um, you can look her up on Twitter, yeah, Instagram, Balsam underscore, yeah. underscore yeah. and I. scary within itself. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> fifth but degree black belt in Olympic <laughs> You come home late, she'd be sharpening a knife, talking about, hey, baby, how you doing? You don't, even know, you don't even know you cut when she hit you. you like, oh. No, but she was good, and she told a story of how she had someone steal something for her and what she did and reacted, but towards the end of the her story started changing just because of having, listening to, like, myself and Vanessa just talking about if you can get it again it's a phone anything like that you can get it again but you only have one life so she was very impactful on her story because not only was she a role model she's pretty much like our Serena Williams okay over there and so because having women in such a powerful role on TV radio she has a TV show she's like the view right. and the talk but being like clearly line, like Serena yeah. Williams <laughs> She's not on TV all the time because right. it is still, even though it's not um, as future progressive like Western as America, but it's not in the past of what we think of the Middle East. Like what you see on TV is what's on TV, what they decide to show you. So she's still fighting a lot of barriers on women training in facilities that are men only. Like when we went there, where we were training, we were so blessed to um, 
to be able to train there because that was one of her spots to where she trained for the Olympics. She was in a London Olympics for fencing. She and her sister are champions. Um, so she's taking this barrier and making it to where women feel okay to be track stars, to be taking care of themselves, to get out of that situation. Like we think it's hard for women here in the States to leave a situation. Just imagine to where you have to live with your family until you get married. That you do. You have to. All your kids be in your house. <laughs> you have to. But they give you a house. Yeah. You have to just figure you out what you want to do. You have to live with your family oh, yes. until you get married. If you're a Kuwait, that's exactly oh, what you have to do. I not want just that. a Kuwait mm-hmm. thing. It's the Middle Eastern right. thing. But I mean, that, yeah. we're talking I wouldn't want, so, want none of that. <laughs> At the time, I don't even like money. But they give you money. They, but they, they give do a you lot. Money, they, they give you money and this. a house. Like Kuwait, they give you, like, once you get married and you have your own family, you're, if you're working, you're working. They're providing for you. They mm. One thing I can say, they don't want their people to live in debt. They, we saw no homeless people at all. Right. And I asked about Please, it. They were like, Kuwait, oh, yeah. we don't want homeless people. That yeah. makes Hip-hop our place look show. bad. Like, but like, no Kuwait citizens can live in an apartment. <laughs> yeah, they have houses. You cannot. You be like, I like this unit. Yeah, that's not yours. <laughs> Go get the house with the fence. That's that's how they have it. But their oh, wow. houses are yeah. top notch, like Hollywood houses. These right. are people everyday houses, and the men are starting to understand that we're in a different time. And they'll tell you that that 10, 10 20 years ago, Kuwait is different from today's right. Kuwait. You go to, they have one of the largest mall in the Middle East avenues. You go there, you have girls hair out, makeup, wearing a hijab, right. wearing a full cover up or they're just enjoying their family so yes the men and their fathers tell them like we will like you to wear this but now they're starting to get to the point to where they're sending their kids to western schools to come back over so they're getting empowered they're learning different ways of the world that they know they can't control or force them to do something that you want and when you ask the ladies they'll say no it's my choice if i want to wear it because there's a reason on why I'm wearing it. Just like you were saying it part about... Is it part of their religion? It's, some of yeah. it is part of their religion, culture. and some of them is, is part of their culture, so it depends on who you're talking to. Um, because you can have the girls... Yes, you won't see them wearing thought skirts and thought dresses, but you'll still sh- see them showing off a little bit more than what you would think right, of right. for someone they, they in They wear yoga pants, but with a long shirt. <laughs> so, okay. you know, but they're yeah. still wearing the Nike yoga right, pants, right, the right, Adidas, right, right. like... <laughs> They only use ten. We we went to a place where they only use ten percent of their land. Like when you fly over it, you, there's only like this chunk that you see with lights and everything it's like else. Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> everything else is just open. You know, they're right. oil. These like when we think of people in the Middle East, we think maybe poor and stuff. No, these they're doing way off. It's just unfortunately the government and religious sometimes can get in between that and change things and perspectives of people. So going there and yeah, training and letting and them do, do it. Government and do the same thing here in the United States. <laughs> hey, so yeah. I ain't going to get on that Without one. the free house and without the Without the, the house. Give me the stipend. House. <laughs> yeah, we don't get a stipend, though. They get yeah, a stipend. No stipend at all. No stipend. We but, can't get Section 8 if we get broke. Hey, bro, let me tell you, it's tough. It's a list for that. You do yeah. get approved. It's still a list. It's still but a list. But just talking yeah. to the women, like, I can say we, we did a three- Three day series. By the third one, especially if I had another class, I had to tell people, "You cannot cry on me. Right. I, I have to teach class after this." Right. But they are so happy, just so thankful that someone, especially coming from America, because anywhere you go, people see Americans as top notch. Like we want to go and to you're America. A black American right. too. Yes, and being a black American. How was that in so, Kuwait? It was awesome. They love it. The kids love it. They'll come. They want to touch you. They're like, oh, let me see." The kids, <laughs> the kids, yes, the kids will touch the adults. You, the <laughs> adults would look. They were, um, you know, just see, or they, they're not afraid to ask me questions. So, like, my hair was out. They'll be like, oh, my God, is that your hair? Like, oh, my God, are you American? I speak English. I'm like, I know you speak English. You just asked me a question. <laughs> but it was just so cute, and I was just so open. Like, then that was, I was able to pull on my travels that my parents brought up, um, you know, instilled in me. Like, my mom's from Liberia, West Africa. So I'm used to international people and family, and my mm-hmm. sister's Lebanese. So I was used to having the hijab to where it didn't phase me. I was looking at you like a normal person and that's what they appreciate right. they don't want you to looking at them like i wonder what she's wearing under there yeah. i wonder what she's doing and tell you they're wearing chanel head to toe oh, yeah. they, burberry they dior everything they you need. they balling they balling underneath there that's red great. bottoms they with them they got, they got chanel hijabs they got balls they, <laughs> they had a whole floor of baby designer things 
So I'm oh, pretty wow. sure they have it. Yeah. They decked out, but then they you can tell they're just they got a so job happy. with the Nike swoosh on the side. <laughs> right. they, actually, Gucci no, jeans. Under Armour just came about. out. Who is it? Under Armour just came out with the line with yeah, the hijabs absolutely. and everything. So yeah. Under Armour hijabs. Yeah, a lot of people are doing it. In the Olympics, athletes, the fencing athletes. champions they are mm-hmm. wearing their hijabs. They're swimming. They have they in um, Kuwait. We met four girls who are going to the Olympics. They are training to do that, but you won't know because they still won't put that on TV because they are still in the transition phase. Okay, yeah. Like they had a, they had, they've had a female police force for nine years. Oh yeah. The first time they all, had, all female police force in, in Kuwait. All female Kuwait so the police first the first academy. time they had hand to hand combat, Sky taught them. That's him. Yeah, it's administrative. And I was Sky, you just made some. You made you, you made were, history. They were, they made history. There, Sky. Because, and I and I felt like it. And it was just it is overwhelming a lot because it's just like I was there. Like, why am I going to police academy? Because when I think police academy, I'm thinking you have to go through training. You have to do this to be on the street. And they're like, no, we go through training, but we're basically behind the desk. And so I had to start thinking about it. Okay. I understand that part. They're not in their uniforms all the time. So on their streets, they look like an everyday woman. So I want just training them and just seeing how, and I get to say it, I felt more appreciated than in Kuwait than here in the state sometimes because we take it for granted that we can just go on Google self-defense for girls. Oh, divas in offense. And you can Google that self-defense for girls and women. (laughs) Divas in offense will come up too. But um, they don't have that opportunity to just Google something like this. Their number one question, how can we continue this? How can we do this? I met um, a martial artist, a black belt there training at the center. She was she's from Jordan. She had to come over and help. They are just more appreciative, and they listen a little bit more, but they also have in their head or um, almost like the it's not going to happen to me, like how people say millennials, we think we're invincible. Right. Sometimes when you're overseas, they people think you're invincible because they have money or they're kind of part of a family that has it to where things can happen because they let their guard down. Mm. They let someone get closer to them instead we of do being that, there. They do that out here, too. Yes, but oh, I'm absolutely. just saying, it's if you, out if, here. If you're in a prominent neighborhood, they'd be like, oh, yeah, that doesn't really happen. And and that's not going to happen over here. Yeah, until until it happens. Your hood. Yes, until mm-hmm. it happens. And it's here, but, we have, but because we have more people on the news making it an effort to say, no, this is happening to you right. here every day, right down the street on 502 Street, right. whereas in Kuwait or in Middle East or just somewhere where they don't really have the media working for them, is not it's kind of like brainwashing like oh the reason this girl got attacked because she took a taxi because she's not rich or she's the, she's not from a um a very a affluent, affluent family, family. Right. but that wasn't the case she was leaving school and going to go see her dad right. and she got raped by a sure taxi did. driver Wow. So that's what I was saying more as the thinking is different to where, oh, in here we kind of think, like, yeah, it's not going to happen to me because I live on here. But it can happen to me. But I know it's not going to happen to me because nobody's going to try it. Whereas there, it's happening to them because they're we don't want them to be blindsided. And sometimes they are. They just have blinders on that. I have money. I'm okay. I have a driver. I have this. But sometimes you have to be by yourself. You have to do things. And it only takes a split second for someone to push you into a car, into a van, into a closet, and take the thing that makes you a woman. Or even take things that you know men have too. Right. So um, that was one thing just going over there. It was just so powerful to give those girls just the notion that people do care. We care. She left her family for three weeks. She left her husband for three weeks. I didn't really leave anybody. But you left your dogs. I did. Oh, they with their grandma. They good. They like her better than me anyway. Um, they, you know, just someone taking the time out to help them, not only show them tips, like I was showing them releases, strikes, and yeah. I always had the what if. I had to get into there like, hey, J-Lo on Enough, if you watch that show, because I had to go watch it because they kept bringing it up. i never seen it before, <laughs> before I left Kuwait. So I had to go, you know, Netflix it, and I saw, like, she trained for literally half the movie. <laughs> right. So, like. So we get that a lot, but it right. was just being able to show them, like, hey, you know, these are moves that you can do every day, practice by yourself. If you're, you know, if your husband is attacking you because. Nine times out of ten, your attacker is someone you know. Right. But, you know, you also got to, like, so my brother Chris, he's my little big brother. He's bigger than me, but he's my little brother. He does personal protection for a lot of people, okay? We realize that no matter how much we teach you, if we don't empower you to realize your self-worth and your self-love, it doesn't matter. Mm. So that was the hardest transition, I think, as a business as business owners to realize our sale is empowerment. 
So no matter if, you, you know, in one class with us, you learn about three strikes, a wrist break. That's class one, one hour. Okay, but you have to do it. You have to use it. If you don't exercise it, you're going to lose it like anything else. But empowerment is something that even as fathers, as men in the community, as people, our female friends, we can let them know that I need you to come home every day. You don't have an option, even for yourself. I need you to do it for me because it's going to mess up my life. Right. It's going to make me disengaged, and I don't want to do that. So, you know, that's my challenge to, to brothers. <laughs> Y'all can go on all social medias or divasindefense.com to find out how you can get involved, how you can take a class, what you can do. They need you. We need you. We thank you, Cole Parker and Sky thank you, thank you for, for being you. here today on Come On, Son, the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all keep God first. Everything else will fall into place. We'll talk at you, with you, to you, and about your ass next week. Be good if you can. Be good. Be careful. If you can't be careful, then you need to go to Divas in Defense and take a class, right? We'll Absolutely. Until the next time we ride together, slide together, laugh out loud together. Ed Lover, Key Mana, and of course, Baby Bucket, Krista Hayes saying God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in and not tuning in. So I remember I always give you the good shit and not the bullshit. Rest in peace always. To combat Jack, brother, you put me in this position. And I'll never forget you. Or I'll always, I'll always keep your name in praise, man, and and I'll keep your soul in prayer all the time. All right, we'll talk to you next time. Come on, son, the podcast. Come on, son. This Ed Lover podcast is being done in conjunction with Cigars International. Make sure you check out cigarsinternational.com for all your cigar needs. This episode of Come On, Son, the podcast is produced and engineered by co-executive producers Kimana Paulus and Krista Hayes. Recorded at Mean Street Studios in downtown Atlanta, Georgia, this is an official Loudspeakers Network podcast.